guys, it's V and welcome back to Whisk Me Away. Today we will continue our wafer paper 101 and I will be showing you different techniques to cut wafer paper. So without further ado, let's see what we can whip up. As you can see, I am using a simple paper cutter that I got from my local craft store. You can cut up to three layers of wafer paper, any more and the cuts won't be as clean. These are fast and easy, and definitely beats cutting freehand circles. Martha Stewart came out with a line of amazing cutters. This is a two-piece set that I am using. For the corner piece, you will need to insert the corner of your wafer paper into the slot and punch. And then you take that corner piece and place it on top of the guidelines and then punch. Every time I use this, I always think to myself, oh my god, this is incredible. Take my money. And then you want to continue the pattern by lining up the wafer paper with the guidelines. My best advice for this part is that you want to be able to see the silver part and cover the white part with the wafer paper. Continue this until you are close to the corner, and then use your corner puncher to finish the piece. Not many cake artists have the luxury of buying different punchers, and there's not that many designs for punchers as well. So this technique may take time, but it will help you save money. First, you want to lightly spritz your cutter with water. Reason for this is that water dissolves wafer paper. Then, press your cutter onto the wafer paper and leave it on for a couple seconds for the water to absorb into the wafer paper. Then, on a flat surface, you want to press down firmly and move your cutter in a circular motion like so. Try putting pressure on different parts of your cutter to make sure that it is cutting evenly. Once you're certain that it worked, peel apart the excess paper from the piece that you cut. This next cutter is shallow and wide. After you spray a cutter, use a paper towel to pick up excess water so that it doesn't ruin your paper. Using the same technique, rub the cutter in a circular motion, but make sure your fingers are on the edges. And then pick it up from time to time and switch your finger positions so that it cuts evenly. Don't forget to examine your cutters before you use them. Not all of them will be perfectly flat. You can see that this one has an even surface on one side and an uneven surface on the other. Usually it's where the seams meet. Even then, these cutters are thin and over time will misshapen. You want to spray on top of the cutters so that the droplets will collect on the edge. If you spray too much, the beads from the sides will fall down and create little puddles on your piece. This cutter has been misshapen and is more difficult to cut compared to the other cutters. If that happens, try using an offset spatula and then in a scraping motion, use short strokes to cut it. I am focusing on areas that aren't cut yet. You can also use your fingers to press the paper against the cutter.
Next is how to apply texture onto your paper. I am lightly spraying my wafer paper and setting it on top of my veiner. Then I am using a paintbrush to help the wafer paper into the crevices. One layer of wafer paper may be too translucent and fragile, so add another layer if you need it to be opaque and sturdier. Once you are done, let it dry. It will detach itself from the veiner when it is done drying. You can also use scissors to reshape your piece and curl the ends so that it looks like a petal. I hope you guys enjoyed part 2 of the Wafer Paper 101. Don't forget to check out part 1 which is about storing and caring for your wafer paper. All of my materials and links will be in the info box. Thank you again for watching and supporting my channel, and I can't wait to show you other amazing things you can do with wafer paper. So until next time, stay sweet and eat dessert first.